Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday morning, afternoon for some of you live stream. I see uh, the normal people in here. I got uh, Aaron and Mark, and we got uh, Pet Malu Life. We got a couple other guys. Macy's Daddy, welcome. Stephen Dick, I think I saw, is in here. Hatfields is in here, of course. So today we're kind of switching um, what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking more reefing today. Um, I have a special guest today that um, I've had his product for quite a long time, and he's here locally in Arizona, so I wanted to show you what he does, show you kind of everything that he's doing. I'm sure some of you guys have his products out there. He sells it in a number of different places, so... Um, yeah, today we're going to be talking mainly about just anything reef related. You know, a lot of people ask me a lot of reef questions and, uh, you know, I have a wealth of knowledge and so is, uh, so does Antonio. So we're welcome to any questions today. Um, yeah, I got a cool shark behind me. I thought that'd be cool. <laughs> so every week I'm going to try to get something cool behind me. Um, let's see. Uh, today we are going to be giving away... Three of the random flow generators to three lucky winners. Um, so we're going to have three winners today. We're not going to have what happened last week. And if you want to win, you got to remember you have to be here when I announce the winners. And if you don't, uh, you do not get to win the prize. And that's what we're going to do going forward. So without further, further ado... I would like to introduce you to Antonio from VCA or Vivid Creative Aquatics. Hello, everybody. So here's Antonio. Hey, Antonio. How's it going, man? Going pretty good. We're just in the production room today. As you guys can see, a small army of printers manufacturing random flow generators and a couple of other accessories and things like that. Sweet. So what are so those are all making uh, the flow generators right now, all those little guys? Yeah. So, like, all these guys up here are making our three-quarter inch nozzles right now. All these ones here, if you can see them, are making our half-inch nozzles. You, can't, you may not be able to see it, but way down in the end, we've got different accessories that be made by our enders. So, we're running about three or four different types of printers in here, or different oh, brands. Wow. Probably some printers, but different so, brands. Um, so, those are pretty high. I'm assuming those are pretty high-end uh, 3D printers. Actually, pretty good they're, ones. Not. They're, they're, they're not. They're just consumer-grade um, sort of you know, two to three hundred dollar printers for most of them, somewhere in the four hundred dollar wow. range. But we do a lot of modifications, so we'll grab this platform and we'll, we'll change out the front, the hot end, the beds, and a few other components in there to make them print better. And so we took that route instead of trying to, you know, drop in, you know, thirty, two thousand, three thousand dollar machines. We did a bunch of them that are so inexpensive that once they're done printing for about a year and they're beyond repair, we just throw them away for parts. Oh, very good. So we got a guy on our stream named Desert Reef Aquatics who got his first 3D printer. So the cool. big uh, ongoing and uh, the big uh, joke in our streams is that he 3D prints his corals and 3D prints his friends and 3D prints <laughs> just about everything. So I thought it would be very nice to have you on and show people what actual 3D printers actually printing quality products actually can do because... His stuff is just, I don't even know if he has it anymore. It's just an ongoing joke in our stream. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it really comes down to the, the type of material you're using. The It's not so much the printer, always. It's it's about how you set up the print jobs, how you slice the files. There's a lot of work that goes into making making those, or that end of the, of the product, work properly so that you end up with a you know product that's nice, it's clean, it's strong, right. it's all the things it needs to be. Um, so that, again, that's why we get away with not using two or three thousand dollar machines. Um, we use an army of inexpensive machines. So but, Macy's, uh, yeah, Macy's daddy asked, "How hard is it to design 3D items to print?" I don't know. I've never had a 3D printer. <laughs> well, it depends. So there's a lot of places you can go just download files, but uh, we over here we use Fusion 360, which is a like sort of a cloud-based uh, CAD program to design most of our parts. Oh, cool. Um, so when it comes to designing a part for 3D printing, you really want, or as we call it, additive manufacturing. 
you really want to think about that design to make it, you know, make it more friendly to that process. Because there are certain limitations to 3D printing. There's there's certain sort of things you got to think about because of the way it lays in the layers that you want to design a part that you can actually print. And so the term is, you know, the design for additive manufacturing, which is different than say designing for molding or designing for, you know, milling or some other process. Mm -hmm. So tell people kind of how you got started and tell people why random flow generates? Why should someone have one of your products? Well, those are two really big questions. <laughs> so, Let's start with one. <laughs> so in the beginning, we, we, we launched this business back in early 2017. And I'd had this idea for quite a while and like in early 16, I was playing with it. And what prompted it was I had a, an innovative marine spin stream on my little uh, 20 gallon nano. Yeah. Which actually a display refuge. And the thing kept sticking and I didn't like that. And you know, because you know, it's got those little gears in there. So I set out to design a nozzle that would, and originally my goal was to spin water, to create a vortex. And in my mind at the time, that was going to move water around the way that I wanted it to move. So I set out to design that. Um, at the time I didn't have CAD, I was using more of, a, of a, an effects and animation 3D package that I did for my previous business. So I used Cinema 4D to design this really cool shape with a spin in it. And and again, my thinking was to spin water. Mm -hmm. And so I got myself a 3D printer, started printing them, and we made a couple of prototypes and they failed miserably. It didn't work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I was just kept trying different designs and eventually we got one. And, and, and in fact, we were here locally, I was testing these out at Saltwater Junkies with Justin. He was standing there most of the time at Saltwater Junkies, but I'd go into their shop plug it in and test it. And so one of the designs I had, we popped it on there, and it actually started to create this effect that that the random flow generator is known for. It wasn't perfect, but it sort of worked. And we noticed it, and we're like, well, that's kind of interesting. So um, I took that idea home. I, I made a couple other design changes, uh, you know, adjusted the sweep angles, the ductors, a bunch of different things. And we, we made a, a couple more prototypes until we got one that actually worked and worked every time. And and so that was how we got to where we were at. At that point, I was just making it for myself, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're I'm sitting there testing it over at Solar Junkies, and it's sitting there randomizing, and we're all like staring at this thing. It's like this is crazy. We don't even know how it works. <laughs> and uh, and uh, a lot of you may know Trev Boy was was standing there, and uh, you know who recently passed away. And, and it, he was looking over his shoulder, and he's like, what is that? I said, <laughs> I don't know, it's a, it's a nozzle. It's a cool thing. Said, what do you call it? I said, a uh, random flow generator. I just made up the name. <laughs> yeah. And um, and he said, well, how much? I said, I don't know, 20 bucks. And he goes, I'll buy one. And I'm like, wow. that's interesting. I, I didn't think about it. I never had thought about <laughs> selling it. I just, you yeah. know, I was... And so he came over to the house next day. We got him one. Um, we gave him one. He bought it. And so that was the first sale. He was actually the first one to hand me money for that thing. Oh, wow. And, and so and so, okay, so that's kind of how we got started in thinking, okay, we should do this. So we started making more. Um, I set up a, like a little website, and I was you know selling them locally and stuff like that. And then um, AZ Frag had, the, during their last Frag Fest that they had, back, again, in 2017, um, we were contemplating getting a booth and it was you know kind of expensive for us at the time oh yeah booths are expensive i had to get a booth for my I business the booth and, like, and, I, don't uh, want to do this. I think that's what it was and i was kind of on the fence and so it was around the time of my birthday and so my parents actually said look we'll pay for the booth you can see if it works that's your birthday present i said okay let's try it so we talked to my wife and i said let's go we'll print up a bunch of nozzles we'll go to the show we'll set up a demo we'll do a little banner and if it works if people are interested enough, then maybe we'll try and pursue this as a business. Mm -hmm. And so we showed up, we set up, we sold a good half of them just to the vendors. And wow. then we sold out of the rest of them like in an hour, hour and a half. And and we literally made like $500 in three hours. Wow. And, our product. and I'm calling my wife and I'm like, bring the extras, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, when I did my booth... Uh, I can't say I had the same experience. <laughs> um, as a home automation programmer, people kept coming up to me and asking me what I'm selling, and I'm like, I'm not selling anything. I 
I program home automation. <laughs> it didn't work out so well, so I don't go to booths anymore. <laughs> well, it, so it worked for us, and yeah. so that was really the catalyst for us to really kind of pursue Pivot Creative Aquatics as an actual business. Terrific. That, that's kind of how it got started. And so, I, and honestly, I kind of forgot what the second half of your question was. but That's, that's okay. Was, yeah. We'll go to that in a second because it kind of brings into all these questions people have. This is kind right. of the same thing I asked. So uh, let me get to a couple questions. Okay. Uh, Mark asked if you have any secret designs in the works. I don't think you do, but well, I'll let you answer We have that. a couple of products we're playing with. Um, ones that aren't secret is we are going to be doing pipe adapters for standard Schedule 40. It's like, you know, we have the 25 mil and the 20 mil and all the metric pipe adapters we sell out of Europe. Yeah. But um, we've got a lot of requests for Schedule 40 pipe adapters. And what that is, that'll be a, a slip fit that you can put right on the end of the Schedule 40 pipe, convert it to lock line, and then you'll be oh, able to put it. Wonderful. Forward. That would be great. That's the secret. The, another product I've been working on for quite some time, I'm not going to reveal it just yet, but <laughs> we'll just say it has to do with measuring flow the same way you might measure R. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Macy's Daddy asked, can you put a random flow generator on a Red Sea reefer? I have a Absolutely. Peninsula 650. It's one of our most popular products. So we actually sell a kit specifically for the Red Sea Reefer series. And so all Red Sea Reefers from the smallest to the largest all have that same inlet. And in fact, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So this right here, this is the actual inlet for a Red Sea Reefer minus a little extension. So we have a, a two nozzle kit that just slips right on the end of that. Oh, and we make wonderful. Two sizes. So the, we have a dual half inch and a dual three quarter inch kit, and you know they're, they're like, it'll take you longer to open the bag than to install it. I mean, it's really simple. Terrific. Well, Macy's daddy, there you go. And we'll go. I think I'll go on your website here in a few for people to kind of see what you have. Um, okay. Anthony asked, are there sweet spots for the flow for a specific size? Yes, actually there are. So all of our nozzles, if you go on our website or any of our reseller sites, they list um, a series of numbers for our, for our minimum flow requirements and our suggested optimal flow. And the reason we call it suggested optimal flow, it's where we think you get the best randomization for the least amount of uh, back pressure. Because you know there, anything you put in the end of the nozzle is going to create back pressure. And they are any ductor nozzle sorts, they have a jet. And so if you stay within that sort of that uh, suggested optimal flow, you're going to get really nice, punchy, random flow, but you're, you're only going to lose about 10 or 15 percent on, on head pressure. Okay. Now, with that said, if you've got head pressure to spare, we, we encourage you to actually go beyond our suggested optimal. You'll lose a little throughput, but in return, you get this really nice, really punchy, random flow that is just, it's unlike anything else. There's nothing on the market that creates that kind of flow. Right. It's yeah, really I, I, I don't know if people know, I have uh, four of your units, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that once I put this thing on, my corals were happy within a couple hours. Like, I can see the significant difference in corals that weren't getting hit with enough flow and now are just by putting this on. And well, Ravi kind of... For, like, for soft corals? They like that movement, but they also want that occasional sort of hit. They want that punch right. flow. But then they want a, a moment to relax and let that flow come back and go forth. And, and so the RFG nozzle can do that. It can create a nice strong current for a moment in that direction. Correct. And then, and then the next moment, it, it's kind of soft and gentle, maybe even coming back the other direction. Right. So. And which, which brings me to kind of the point that I was going to say was, you know, everyone out there gets an MP40, for instance. Everyone out there gets a, a gyre. They get a different power head. And that's just sending flow constantly, but in different, you know, different amounts. Whereas yours actually removes flow completely for a period of time. You know, you would have to put an MP40 and have it spinning around your tank for basically to do what yours is doing, which is quite astonishing. Oh. So what we've actually seen for, especially for the guys with the bigger tanks where they just don't have enough um, inlets to just use just random flow generators, because most right. tanks are designed that way. It's, and it, particularly with the guys who are using gyres. So if you, let's say you have a gyre and it's pushing your water out this way and it's all laminar flow. Right. Take a couple of random flow generators, you put, you put them in kind of perpendicular to that flow. 
it will actually help to kind of punch holes in that laminar flow and, and take one gyre and make it less laminar and more random. Right. Because that kind of punch holes in that in that flow as it's going around. That's so. basically exactly what I'm doing. So I have my MP40s on my sides, and your random flow generates basically are cutting that. They're re- literally cutting it. So it sends flow in patterns that you can't do without the random flow generator. It's just, it's just not possible. Um, we got a question from Reefing Ravi, which basically you kind of started to talk about it, which was, does it increase flow or just spread water in a random pattern? pattern? So, so a little bit of both. Um, so one of the things to keep in mind with the random flow generator is it, it is like the inductor nozzle, so it does increase velocity coming out of the nozzle. However, because it's not an inductor nozzle, not always pushing in one direction, if you're below our suggested optimal flow, it may have the effect of a perceived lower flow. Okay. And that's probably because, let me grab, let me grab our, this really large one here, I can kind of demonstrate. <laughs> so this, is, this is for your five gallon nano. Yes. Um, so you guys can kind of see there's like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's five channels in there, right? Yep. So each channel is active, but only one channel at a time. And so that flow exits the nozzle about a 30 degree angle, right? And so what, because it's not always going in one direction like a standard deductor, it does never build up the momentum to make you think, oh, look at all that water, it's moving. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it's moving just as much water, but it's going this way and this way and this way and this way and this way. Right. And so in that sense, it does increase the volume, um, but it doesn't increase the distance necessarily. Mm-hmm. Which, which a lot of people will actually confuse with, with more flow. So Sean kind of had to say had a, another question right on what you just said, which is what is the flow rate required for proper operation? I don't know if there's a proper operation, right? right? It depends on the size nozzle. So as an example, a three-quarter inch random flow generator has a sweet spot around 500 to 600 gallons an hour, where say a half inch is uh, 375 to 425, 450 space. Okay. That's maybe it's it's sort of our suggested optimal flow. And you have this on the website, I presume? Correct. So all, okay. all of our nozzles have a listing next to them. Our packaging has a listing on it. Yeah, we'll probably go over this before now, we go to the... It's important to note on the on the suggested optimal flows that those are actually to the nozzle, okay, without the nozzle in place. So what that means is that that's after any head, lo- any head loss you get from your plumbing going up to the nozzle return line and with the nozzle not on the return line. So if I say... But a, random, a three-quarter inch once around 500 gallons an hour. That's 500 gallons an hour to the outlet, but without the nozzle. Yeah, so if someone was to put a flow sensor right above your return pump, uh, that's not the correct flow. <laughs> yeah, like, I have a... I've, be more, I put my flow sensor, like, literally right below my output, so I know exactly what the flow is right there. And I highly recommend anybody that's using flow sensors to do that. When you're trying to measure your return pump flow, it should be as close to your output nozzle as possible. Yep. Um, Brandon had a good question. Have you looked into printing combo bulkheads plus adapters? Um, we have. Um, and the only reason we're not going to go down the bulkhead route is that a bulkhead is a mission-critical piece of plastic. <laughs> if that fails, a lot of bad things happen. And yep. although our products are pretty sturdy and, and they're good, they are 3D printed in that sense, and I just was not comfortable using a bulk, you know, bulkhead, a 3D printed using FDM printers bulkhead. It just, it just seemed like a recipe for disaster for me. Yeah. So, so we, we kind of steered away from it. Now, with that said, we do have a design in the works that would allow you to integrate a random flow generator into a bulkhead, so that the that the nozzle is mostly flush mounted. Um, okay. Once we get further down that road, we may start looking at molding for the bulkhead. You know, because obviously we're not going to 3D print that as a permanent piece. Um, but the idea is that the, the the nozzle would sit inside the bulkhead. So imagine a bulkhead that you know it sticks out the back. The nozzle right. goes inside and only maybe protrudes about that far out from the glass. And so now you okay. would have, you know, this sort of wall of flow, random flow that doesn't take up space. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know about everyone out there, but I don't use bulkheads for my returns um, in the in the actual tank. I, I don't know many people. I'm not sure to do. There's, there's quite a few that will have both, like, two bulkheads on either end. Okay. Um, if they have a ghost overflow, you can't really put a, a return line in there. So a lot of the custom manufacturers use bulkheads. Okay. 
Um, a lot of questions here are about what size do I need for this? What size do I need for that? I think if you go to his website, which is vividcreativeaquatics.com, you have a lot of information. It tells you what size you need, what flow you need. Um, you know, that would be where I would go uh, for all the people that are asking questions. Hey, what fitting do I need? Um, fitting, every... uh, Mark, that's a good question. So all of our random flow generators, um, the half inch, or I should say all, but the, the half inch and the three quarter inch are designed to connect directly to the genuine lock line. And that's important because a lot of right. paint manufacturers use uh, non-genuine lock lines, like the Chinese brand lock modular hose. And so you always want to look on the lock line or the hose you have and see if it's got the words lock line and boss on the knuckle. If it does, then the random flow generator will snap right onto it, no, no issue. Right, that's how mine is. If it does not, then we actually have a series of, uh, of adapters that you can purchase that will convert the, you know, convert the end of the random flow generator here to be compatible with, with that with that different hose right um and so water box is one of them that has different hoses uh um I, i'd say just about it so just about every tank out there has a different connector of some sort mm -hmm. so you really got to look and determine which adapter you might need if you don't have genuine lock lines okay which i have yeah well i think we're going to go on the website here in a bit um desert reef says the stream cut up on him we don't care uh, Gary asked, we, I think we ex discussed this, but Gary asked about f flow rates. If you go to the website, it, it basically says what flow rate is optimal. Uh, he's specifically asking, will it work with flow rates that are very low? Is what it sounds so, like. Yeah. So if, even if you go below our suggested optimal flow it, or our suggested minimum flow, it'll still randomize. It's just that because it's randomized, you will barely be able to feel it because that water is always changing directions. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, you can take a three quarter inch nozzle and you can put 120 gallons an hour or less through it and it will randomize that flow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually interesting because we actually have a lot of freshwater guys that'll use our nozzles, but they'll oversize them because mm -hmm. they're not looking for that punchy random flow. They're looking for more throughput, but less movement. I and see. so they, they use a one-inch nozzle in their tank and feed it only 150 gallons an hour or lower, which will be almost, you won't be able to feel it really, but you can kind of see a little bit of movement. But they'll be able to push more water through it and get a softer flow, so to speak. Mm. It, it basically diffuses it out. So, yeah, people are saying that the stream is cutting out, but uh, <laughs> it's, it looks like it's back now. Um, so my second question to you was, why buy one? So let's say, you know, we got someone that's trying to, you know, design a tank. Why do I need this? That was my that was my question. What is it going to so, provide that something else can't? Let's say. So a couple reasons. Um, first, most most reef tanks, especially mixed reef tanks, you kind of want a more you want random flow, but you still want it to be kind of strong. And so the RFG nozzle is actually a very easy way to kind of provide some of that the varied movement of that water flow in there. Um, and it has no moving parts, so it's not going to generate any heat. It's not going to use any electricity. It's not going to, um, you know, stop working because, it, because there's nothing in there to, 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 to kind of jam up, so to speak. The mm -hmm. only thing that causes it to stop working is that it gets clogged up. But even then, it's still going to push water. Um, in which case, yeah, that's pretty easy to clean. So, like, you know, the inductors, if the inductors get clogged, it will stop randomizing, but it will still push water out the nozzle, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good reason. So less complexity, um, you know, no moving parts, no electricity. But another important thing you can do with it is that if your flow is designed properly, you can actually, in some cases, use just random flow generators in your return pump to generate flow in your aquarium, in which case right. that's a lot less expensive than a more expensive power head. See, um, that's kind of what I, when I first started to see your product, that's kind of what I felt was the whole point of the product until I started to see more and more people doing the choppiness we discussed earlier. Like I always thought that the random flow generator was a replacement for power heads, which it isn't. I mean, it's kind of a... basis, it can be yeah. if it's deployed properly, but 
it's not its primary <laughs> purpose is not to replace a powerhead, but it right. could if it's deployed properly. Right. A, a good case in point. So locally here in Phoenix, uh, limited edition coral, LE corals, their mm-hmm. entire shop is run with random flow generators. There's no powerheads in any of their tanks. And wow. that includes their coral grow-out system in the back. That includes their coral displays in the front. They're all power, they must have all some pretty uh, powerful powerheads going. <laughs> I've never well, been there. So. Yeah, you got to check that store out. I mean, they've got a 10... Well, there's a video on our YouTube channel of, of their 10-foot by 4-foot by 18-inch uh, coral plant. It's three. It's six random flow generators driving the entire tank. Cool. No powerheads. <laughs> what? So, <laughs> Someone just said, "Oh my goodness!" See, there's all kinds of fun in our in our streams here. Uh, Desert Reef Aquatics would like to buy the orange one from you. Um, he also said that uh, I didn't announce what the size is that I'm giving away. So apparently, everyone thinks I'm giving away the large orange one, <laughs> which you know that'll work with everyone's tank, of course. Uh, John was asking how long does it take to print one. I was curious too, actually, about well, how long it takes. To get it on the side. So as an example, of you guys can see me here. So this is a this is a half inch nozzle here, right? So that one's going to take about an hour, maybe five minutes to produce one. Uh, Three quarter inch nozzles here are going to take about an hour and thirty minutes to produce one. But but there's a lot of steps to go on after they're printed. So we all of our products go through like a three stage QC process where they're going to get brushed. They're going to get inspected, they're going to get heat gunned, they're going to get sized. And so, you know, if we were to just print one and go through that whole process, um, it would be the the time of printing plus probably about 15 to 30 minutes per unit. However, because we got this assembly line, and you guys can't see it, but all our guys are back there in the other part of the office, is that we've got it down to probably about four to six minutes of touch time per nozzle after they get printed. And they go through the whole process from printing to packaging. There's about four or five steps. Cool. But uh, I, someone I asked a good question. Let's see. I didn't know how to even ask this question, so I will just read what he said. Okay. I get people all the time asking for these to be printed, and we have to tell them no. Can you explain to everyone why the generic versions on a popular website do not work? I don't know what he's asking. Well, I, I do. So there is a version on Thingiverse that's out there that has a similar visual look, um, but they don't have the same physical function as ours do, um, despite their claims. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could tell you why it doesn't work, but that would be kind of secret sauce kind of stuff. That's um, fine. You don't have to. But I could tell you that their their internal fins and the angles and eductor sizes and all the stuff that they have on there are not what they need to be to actually function like an actual random flow generator. Mm. So, you know, they could they could print one if they want. Um, I even encourage you to go try it. Well, I've seen is most people will come along and they will they'll print that themselves. They'll find out it doesn't work or just reduces their flow completely, and then they just come back and buy a random flow generator. And, you know, they're priced so fairly that it, by the time you downloaded that file, sliced it, put it on your printer, printed it three or four times to get it right, you could have just bought a random flow generator for like right, 80. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the cost of these, it looks like, are between, what, $20 and 50 looks yeah, like. You know, the, your half-inch nozzle for a single is like $17.99. Um, a single three-quarter inch is $19.99. Um, and there's, there's two-pack pricing and things like that. So it's it's, it's very affordable. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Everybody, but, you know, it's enough that we can make enough money to run a business. And it's low enough that I think it's an easy add-on for almost everything. Oh, my goodness. So Desert Reef Aquatics said, I told you Desert Reef Aquatics is kind of our troll. Uh, See a lot of good things come from Arizona because we are the best. So I do want to mention Desert Reef Aquatics that Arizona is now the highest rated COVID increase in the entire United States. I just want you to know that, that uh, we are doing good with COVID over here. Um, he says he's going to pay 50 bucks for the orange one. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but... Well, most people want to display it. Um, this one's actually a semi-transparent, so you can put it on a lamp and make it a, make it a lamp. <laughs> we were actually playing with that idea to make it a, 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 a pressure-sensitive switch so you can just set it on there and it would light up and pick it up. Um, this one's actually 
This one's really soft though. So we printed this really hot and with only a couple of shells. So you could probably just break this in half if you wanted to. Oh wow. Um, but it's pretty cool looking. I mean, it's, yeah, it's I agree. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to switch you over to your website so we can show people some of your stuff here. Because um, we've got a lot, of, a lot of questions about what size I need, what I, you know. So, like I said, these cells random flow generators. There's a number of sizes. And, Antonio, let me know if I say something inaccurate. Um, well, before we go to the website, so we yeah. do sell direct. But we like to support our local fish stores. And random flow generators is available at a lot of stores across the country. Okay. Um, it's available in a lot of stores in Europe and, and the UK, Australia, uh, Japan, uh, Hong Kong. I mean, the list goes on. So make sure you guys visit our Where to Buy page, too, because you might not have to wait for shipping. You might just go down to the store on today after the stream and go buy it. Yeah, I bought mine actually from Marine Depot, if I recall. Um, okay. I believe it was Marine Depot I bought mine. Um, so we got, looks like a half inch, three quarter inch. Uh, we got one that says it has a modular hose fitting with it yeah, so our one inch, so we actually have, this is important too because we have a one inch nozzle and so lockline the brand modular hose does not make a one inch hose and that's been a pretty big you know thing people look for so we actually sourced a one inch modular hose and it comes with the mpt fitting to go right into a one inch threaded bulkhead yep um, and we have that's a whole system. Showing. We have a one inch hose a one inch one to one y we have a one inch to three quarter inch wide reducer. So we have all these one inch hose parts, which are very hard to find. Yeah, there's, I see where you're seeing, I see what you're seeing here. So I just want to reiterate for all the people out there. And again, let me know if I'm mistaken in what I'm saying. All of your random flow generators are lock line. Is that correct? That's not correct. So that, our half correct. inch and our three quarter inch are lock line compatible, as is our quarter inch. I should. Note that the quarter, the little tiny, you know, this little guy, that little tiny quarter inch nozzle, that's that's <laughs> also locked. Um, we do have a one inch slip fit for Schedule 40 PVC. Okay. Um, and our 1.25, 1, 1. 1.5, and two inch random flow generators are all slip fit Schedule 40 PVC. Okay. I'm trying to find it here so I can. And of course, the, the one inch nozzle that we have that, that's for modular hose is for the modular hose but that is not a lock line brand hose i see i found it now okay so depending on the size will depend on if you need an adapter essentially if you're plugging it right into to a tube or into a, a pipe of some sort okay and you have a bunch of adapters here i'm looking at the adapters as well and it looks like you sell some lock line stuff too yeah, we are actually a lock line dealer, so we have pretty much all the lock line parts an aquarium guy might want. Cool. And the best part is you're located in Arizona, so too bad for all the other people. <laughs> I could just well, go again, and get them. You're going to find a lot of these parts locally, too, across the country, so yeah. it's, it's possible your local fish store may have them if you're not in Arizona. Um, or, again, obviously you can buy them from all the major online retailers. In fact, all of them now. We, you know, we have uh, bulk resupply, Marine Depot, Aqua Cave, um, a whole slew of them. And then we just, uh, Aquarium Specialty just picked this up, which is nice. So they're kind of a local store and an online retailer. Um, Worldwide Coral, I think, has our products on the shelf. Top Shelf Aquatics. Uh, I mean, a huge list. Yeah, I'm looking at a bunch of stuff here. So I'm curious, uh, I think I had asked this to you personally before, but... Have you ever thought about making um, like random flow generators for specific pumps? Um, you know, like a, like an MP40 or like a. Oh, so we, we've actually tried that, and, and I actually have a design for it, and I don't for, for I have it to show you. But the challenge with with a with a flow pump is that a flow pump has no head pressure. If you close okay. it, it just blows out the side, right? And so what you're forced to do to make this work, and I have made this work, is that you have to size the internal jet to be almost the size of the output of the pump. Mm -hmm. For an example, an MP40 has an opening about that big. Um, that means that your nozzle is almost this big. Right? <laughs> and well, there you go, uh, Desert Reef. But, There's how you can use it on your MP40. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work the way you would hope it would. So you end up with this little tiny flow pump with this ginormous contraption on the front that I just don't know who would use it or why. <laughs> um, 
So let so, me ask you a, a question on the rant. I don't know if this is a secret or not, but your randomizer, it doesn't do it like in a, like a clock rise manner. It's completely random, right? It, it goes... So okay, so kind of. So let's say that we put this nozzle in a body of water with no turbulence. It was just a still, no move, that water just no moving. Mm -hmm. And we were to push water through the middle here, right? Right. So water went to the nozzle here. It'll be ejected out of the middle like a single stream, okay? And that stream then, you know, basically causes it to pull water into the eductors. And these eductors will draw water in. And so the stream goes right down the middle while the eductors stream goes around the corner, creating a pressure imbalance, right? And so what happens is that stream gets educted into one of these channels. And if there's no other movement in the water, it'll very orderly go channel one, two, three, four, five, one, It'll just go in a perfect circle like a mechanical device. I see. But as soon as you start introducing turbulence to the water that this generates, mm -hmm. it starts changing the pressures around the base of the eductors, which then in turn randomizes the flow. So instead I of see. one, two, three, it goes one, two, three, three, and it starts bouncing around and does this, you know, and does different things. So it is, it does act like a mechanical device until you give it some turbulence, and then it starts randomizing. And, and that turbulence is built up by the nozzle itself. I see. Yeah, it's very intuitive, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> that little thing can do so much. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm sorry. These people are making fun of, of me, so I have to defend myself. Give me one <laughs> second. Uh, Derek didn't buy from a local... Wait, what did they say here? So Derek is not supporting local businesses. <laughs> he bought it from Marine Depot. <laughs> well... Uh, I'm not saying anything. Okay. Uh, hey, I own it, right? I have it, so I bought it. <laughs> Ultimately, it was bought. No matter where you bought it, you did a <laughs> I local did buy business. it. <laughs> All right. All I right. On the stream there, uh, a couple of, uh, regarding frag grippers and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we helped design and even in the beginning manufactured the frag gripper for uh, Bob over to, at um, Reef Stew. And, uh, oh, he nice. Now we helped get him set up, but yeah, we're, we got a, we actually have one for the larger corals coming down the line, so it could be interesting. Yeah, I was uh, I don't know if you saw, but I was showing off your website and showing all the different things you sell, not really getting into specifics, but uh, yeah, you got a lot of different things here. Um, for those that don't know, he he makes the um, AI Prime uh, flaps for the AI Primes. He designed those. Um, and those fact, I've had those for a long time. In conjunction with uh, Devin at Reef Dudes. Right. And so he had the idea originally, and he approached us and said, hey, can, can we help design this and then manufacture it? I said, sure. So uh, he brought the idea over, we refined it, we made it work, and then now we manufacture and sell a ton of those things for him. Oh, yeah. All right, people. So we have 24 that have entered the contest. We need 25 today to give out these things. So, uh, yes, give out, give give people uh, know that uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just people get on here and enter the contest. Um, and as you all know, I I pay for all this stuff. I'm not Antonio is not sponsoring the video. I just asked Antonio to come on. So for all you guys that think that I'm getting these people and they're giving me a bunch of free stuff, that's not happening. Um, let's see. Checking if there's any questions here. Does anybody have any questions about reefing, about anything? Any questions for Antonio about his product? <laughs> kind of passed by already, so let me see if I can scroll back and find some of those. Um, folks asked, how would the nozzle compare to something like a pair of gyres set to a random on and off cycle? Um, well, it would depend on a couple of factors. Obviously, a gyre is probably way more powerful than than your return line. But would if you had a um, if you had a closed loop instead, and you were able to put in the, the the inlets in the right positions for your size tank and everything, I think that you could be very comparable to that kind of movement. The only difference is that the gyre, even on random, is still creating like a rolling motion, right? Mm -hmm. And and so I think in my mind you could probably if, if that was your goal, you could probably reduce it from two gyres to just one, 
and then use the RFG nozzles to then randomize that even more. So you can put the gyre, instead of on random, you can put it on a lower setting of steady and use the RFGs to then create that very random movement that would be unpredictable and, and create things going in every direction. Yeah, like I said earlier, guys, um, I had just regular, whatever those ones are, the lock line with the, the thin nozzle on them, and I had some MP40s, and I just pumped them in, and my corals that were kind of up higher, I noticed that they weren't opening up much, and I put these random flow generators on, and I swear within two hours, all of a sudden they started perking up because I was starting to get that turbulent flow going to them that they couldn't get from the MP40s because the spread just wasn't there. So when you add these uh, return line guy or the random flow generators into the mix, you're getting all kinds of random flow throughout the whole tank, and it really, really does help. Um, someone asked a question that's interesting. Anthony asked, does 3D printed parts in an aquarium grow more algae? That's an interesting um, question. Well, not to my knowledge. However, it probably would depend on the type of material you're using. So, like, let's say PLA for, for that for, is, is one material that a lot of people 3D print with. Um, I wouldn't personally recommend that you put that in your aquarium, only because PLA is a corn-based product, and it is a similar plastic to bio pellets. However, there are a lot of people who are using PLA with no problems at all, and, and what we're finding is that really most PLAs are mixed with something else. And so if you've got like a PLA plus or a PLA pro material, that's usually mixed with ABS or PETG. Mm -hmm. In cases, they tend to not grow algae. They tend to not break down. They, they tend to be okay in the saltwater aquarium. Like I've, I've had PLA parts, PLA pro parts in my own personal aquarium for years, and they're the same. Um, but they're not going to be as flexible as, say, PETG, which is what we use to manufacture all of our products that go into the aquarium. I and see. so PETG is basically the same material that you're going to find in water bottles, consumer packaging, things like that. And mm -hmm. it has higher impact resistance. It's more flexible, um, very strong, but not necessarily biodegradable like a, uh, like a PLA is. So you're not going to grow algae on it. Now, with that said, because they are 3D printed, they have, they're not perfectly smooth, right? And right. so micro ridges in there will you know if you're if your tank grows algae algae is going to grow on them well i now, can tell you and i told you when we first started i have a ton of coralline algae on my yeah, random flow I've generator actually got some customers that have purple random flow generators because it is so covered in coralline yes. algae that which is which is great they know i want that um so to answer your question anthony yes it'll grow algae but mine grows coralline algae so there you go um Aaron asked if you have a reef tank. You said you do have a reef tank, right? In fact, yeah. if you visit my personal profile on Facebook, and just Antonio Gutierrez, you'll see uh, a picture of my personal reef tank on my profile picture. You can also visit our, our Instagram page, which is, of course, I think it's vivid.creative.aquatics or vivid underscore. I can't remember which one it is, but you'll find us. Um, I'm always posting pictures from my own personal tank. It's a 125-gallon mixed reef. I've actually had awesome. it up for about seven and a half years. Oh boy. Um, it does use our nozzles, but not as a primary source because we didn't have the nozzle when we set up the tank, and it's not really <laughs> optimal for just our to do just our nozzles there. So eventually, we're going to have a tank here at the office, and we just haven't decided yet if we're going to stay in this suite or move to a new one. So as soon as we figure that out, we're going to put at least a 125 gallon tank here that will be Sweet. only RFG nozzles. Oh, there you go. But we just uh... ended up taking it down, so. <laughs> This is a good question uh, someone asked here, and I agree. Uh, any any uh, future in making colors, different colors? So we actually do have some colors. So like this orange one here, we've had quite a few people have ordered the orange from us. <laughs> and if you guys are interested in a different color, um, we do have stock right on the website, the Azure Blue, which is like a deep sort of semi-transparent blue color. Okay. Um, here, I've got some samples here. So these aren't nozzles. These are actually the volutes that we're manufacturing for Delua out of Australia. So we're actually manufacturing these volutes for their great white skimmers. Oh, and nice. uh, so we make them in this azure blue. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, yeah. But we have nozzles in that as well. But we also have a sea, I call this sea foam silk or, or sea glass white, which is semi-transparent. We could do a nozzle in that color. This is so our if someone form. wanted to get a special color, could they just contact you directly? Yeah, just reach out to us. So we do have a small color change fee. Like five dollars. Okay. Um, 
but we only charge that fee if we don't already have one printed or we don't have the filament loaded. And okay. sometimes we actually have them already. You know, I, I'll print a couple off, keep them in the back for those, for those, you know, those times that people ask for it. Um, we don't put them on the website as a stock option because I can't provide those to all the stores or distributors. We, our right. SKU number would explode and they would just get mad. <laughs> uh, it's a special request. We can do that. Okay. So this is an interesting question so, also. I'll, I'll show you the colors real quick if you want to see them. Okay. So we've got... So we've got sea glass blue, sunset orange. We got UV yellow. Oh wow! Yeah, and a bunch of colors color. there. Okay. So just wanted to show that off real quick. No problem. Um, let me see which one I wanted to answer. I'm going to answer a couple of these. Pet Malu asked, uh, "Do you put your flow sensor after or before the UV sterilizer? You put it before this UV sterilizer." You want to know the flow going into the UV sterilizer. Um, I'm not sure how to answer this one. Uh, what are the f differences? Or f He's asking what are the flow differences between one or two. I'm assuming he's saying if you were to split it into two. Um, okay. That's actually a really good question. Um, yeah. So with the random flow generator, you kind of want to think about it a little bit differently than you might with, say, just flare nozzles or some other sort of attachment. So... You want to look at the, the two nozzles you have, look at the optimal suggested flow rating, and you want to try and make sure you're supplying those nozzles that much. And if you can't, let's say you've got, you're splitting it off and you've got two three-quarter inch nozzles, they both want about 500 gallons an hour for the optimal suggested flow. You will get a better performance out of a single nozzle at say 500 gallons an hour than you will out of dual nozzles at 250 each. I see. Um, so if, if you can't reach the, the suggested optimal flow, you most times you'll get a better result out of a single nozzle than you would out of dual. Mm -hmm. And so we suggest that a lot of times you'll go, I want to put four or five in there. Mm -hmm. And I the calculations, and they're going to feed each one about 150 gallons an hour. I'm like, that's not going to work. You want to you want to cut that back <laughs> to nozzles. Um, yeah, we're not going to talk about my tank. <laughs> but you also want to keep in mind too that if you're using lock line, which these are designed for. Lockline itself will reduce your flow because of the internal design. So the longer the run or every Y will reduce flow to the knob. Exactly. Uh, ETA on the Schedule 40 adapters, someone asked. Soon. <laughs> We've been so busy this last couple of weeks. Well, when COVID hit, we had a really strange effect on the hobby. And I've seen this across the board with most manufacturers. Everybody had money to go on vacation, but they didn't. <laughs> and then everybody will sit around. And so what did they do? They took all that money and they played with the fish tank. And so we've just been just oh, yeah. 100 for three months now. And uh, and so I haven't had a chance to get that on there. So I'm hoping that we can get those into production maybe by the middle of this month or the end of this month. We're already in the middle. Um, you know, maybe by that time we'll have some for testing and some, and some things we can send out. We won't have officially for sale. I would say it would still be at least a month out before we'd have physical uh, products. Now, if, if he was interested in testing, have him contact us, and when we're ready, we'll, we'll, we'll produce a couple and send them out and make sure that they fit all those different pipes. And things around. Okay. Uh, I think I have the answer for this question. They're asking, um, is there a recommended cleaning schedule of these? Now, I have not ever cleaned mine. So it will depend on your, on your again, on your tank. So yeah. if you a lot of stuff if you have bubble algae in your tank like i do unfortunately um you do have to kind of take care of them more often than not but it's really important this is actually really good so let's say that you got your nozzle on your on your tank right mm -hmm. you don't really have to take it off to clean it you can just if you remember to do this when you feed your fish just take a turkey baster and squirt it in here that'll mm -hmm. blow everything out the back or just hold your hand over it and let it blow all the stuff out the back I if see. you often enough it will never get clogged up and you never have to take it off um, now, if you do have to take it off, let me let me grab a section of lock line real quick. Give me one second. Okay. So this here, let me uh, let me just grab one right off the printer. <laughs> there you go. So there's a there's a farm fresh RFT nozzle for you. Um, 
So basically, they, they go on the lock line, right? Right. A lot of people want to pull straight out, and that's going to put that's going to be harder, and it's going to put a lot of stress on that connector. Yeah. So what you want to do is when you take them off, you want to just snap them. It should be like almost like one little finger, and, and they come right off. Right. So if you do want to take them off to clean them, don't pull them straight out. You know, snap it like a twig. Right. Don't come off. Um, and then as far as cleaning them again, it'll just depend on how your tank is or if you if it needs to be cleaned. But the main thing is just to keep the inductors clear. And you can use like a little pipe cleaner to kind of go in there and just poke those out. Um, you okay. can soak them in bleach or whatever material or other stuff you want to do. I mean, whatever you normally do to clean plastic parts, these will hold up to it. Yeah, that was the question also someone asked is what would you clean it in? I think citric acid would be fine. Yeah, citric acid's fine. Uh, yeah. Vinegar is okay. There's no magnets or anything in here. Um, you know, any you know, I think the only thing you want to avoid is really hot water. I mean, that might. I mean, boiling mm-hmm. water soften it. I think. <laughs> but someone, you know. uh, let's see, what's the easiest? You know, uh, R5 spike. I'm going to do a video on cameras. Everyone's asking about cameras. Uh, I just haven't had time, but I will do a video on setting up cameras for Apex for you. Um, Aaron had a good question here. Uh, does Coraline affect flow with just a thin layer? It shouldn't. Okay. Um, and, and, and the reason it doesn't is that because the, these inductors back here have a really high velocity going into them because they're small. And so what we found is that Coraline algae will grow around there, but it never closes it up because it's such a high flow going through it. So it never really has that much of an effect over the flow going through case in point if you go to our instagram page and you dig through it you'll find a nozzle that i have in my personal tank it's a half inch nozzle like this that has a coral that's about this big growing that it planted <laughs> itself on here it's a possible pora and the whole nozzle's engulfed I mean, oh it, boy rusted it's about this big and <laughs> but the inductors never close up it's, it's growing over the whole thing but the inductors are open the thing still randomizes perfectly so as long as the inductors are open you're pretty much safe Essentially. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then the inductors are key to how the whole thing works. So as long as they're clear, um, you'll be fine. Now, with that said, if, if, a, if a little stominella snail or something camps or something right there in that little channel, or I'll do the big <laughs> if it camps like right here in that channel, yeah. it may disrupt that channel and may disrupt the randomization a bit. And yeah, so, so my, um, you know what a chitin is, I assume, but yep. I, have, I have chitins in my tank, and they just love to hang out inside your random jo- flow generator. So what I've found, too, and this is kind of funny, I've actually seen a chitin that somehow got into plumbing, and it'll 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 lodge itself between the lock line and oh, the yeah. jet. And so that little triangle shape splits that flow and disrupts the whole thing. Yep. <laughs> Mine love to do that. Uh, I've seen that a couple of times. They, they must grow in the pipe. I mean, that's the only way I can think of they got in there. So, Yeah, Sean has a really good question, and I was going to ask this question also. How important is it that these are under the water? Now, I, he's actually, asking they need to be placed further under the water line to prevent vortex. That's what he said. So yeah, that so was kind of my question. It's very important because the random flow generator basically works through an imbalance of pressures inside the nozzle. Okay. Air and, and, and air and water have different viscosities, which would create different pressures. So let's say that you had this too close to the surface or even above it. That air is a lower viscosity, which creates a different pressure than the water and completely negate the whole process of how it works. Mm-hmm. So they do have to be below the water. Now, with that said, I know that you can't, if you push them too deep, you can overflow your sump and, and there could be issues with that. Mm-hmm. And so one of the easiest ways to prevent that is uh, there's a couple of tricks. So here's the nozzle installed on a lock line, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people will do that to it. And so what you're doing is you're putting pressure, a different pressure on the top of the nozzle than the bottom of the nozzle that kills off the randomization, which then also activates that eductor. I see. And the, and the water's right here, so you create that vortex right there. So what you want to do is you want to straight the last section of the lock line and do something more like... That's how like, I have mine. I keep like mine that. straight. Yeah. As long as it's parallel to the surface and you rotate this little fin right here, you know, the logo will be kind of lined up with that fin. You, ru- you run that fin like this, you're minimizing the exposure of these inductors to the surface and it randomizes. Now, if it's randomizing properly, that inductor is never going to be active long enough to create that vortex. 
right? It's gonna keep it's gonna keep going around the bend and, and, and going around right. this, this one, this one, this one. As long as that doesn't stay active too long, it won't create the vortex. You need it closer to the surface. Yeah, because um, John had mentioned here, keep them parallel to the water. That's correct. what he's saying. Okay. And so that's that, that'll help minimize that. Now, again, now with that said, everything there's always variation. So if you're running higher than our suggested optimal flow, um, you will have to push them deeper into the water. There's just no way around that. Okay. Um, one trick we've actually seen, and this is actually um, also good for people who have small, tiny fish in their tank. <laughs> Say you've got a baby clown, and they're not very strong swimmers. You can actually take a, a filter sponge, like a tube sponge, like I think eShops makes it, mm -hmm. and you can actually cut a little section and wrap it around the base of the nozzle. That'll help prevent a fish from getting sucked in, but it also has the added benefit of letting you put these things like right at the water surface. I see and what you're saying. Function. Okay. And function properly, and they don't draw on water. Not as beautiful or pretty as that <laughs> is, but it does work. See if in I fact, can... if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find a video on that, on how to install that. Okay, terrific. Uh, let's see. I'm looking if there's anything else. So we're at about an hour, so we're gonna we're gonna close up shop here. Uh, let me see if there's anybody else that has any specific questions, and then we'll we'll give some of these guys away. Awesome. So we're gonna have three winners today, and each of these winners are gonna let me know what their tank setup is, and I will contact you and you tell me what they need, and I'll get them for you from you and uh, get three new customers look at that nice well I'm the customer but you're gonna get three new people with them <laughs> sounds good to me yeah all right so is there any additional questions before we uh, run the contest anybody anybody Desiree aquatics are you done talking let's see he is done talking, thank God. All right. Let me pull this guy up. All right, so the first winner of today's contest is Gary Astron. Gary, you are our first winner. I'm going to pull another winner. Our second winner today is Howard. And our third winner today is Tank Tools. All right. <laughs> Very nice, guys. Oh, anyway, I got a figure here that's kind of acting up. That's okay. So the three gentlemen that won today, I'm assuming Tank Tools is a man, but uh, the three people that won, please go ahead and say hello in the chat to let me know you're still here. This usually takes a little while. There's a There's a delay, so... So how many people we got on the stream today? We had, uh, I, you know, I didn't check. I think we had about 30-something. Nice. Looks like I've got I see 30 watching right now. Very cool. Yeah. Someone said, VCA has awesome customer service. Oh, thank you. You know, it's one of the things we uh, we, we we put almost above everything else um, is customer service. Um, because I'm a hobbyist first, right? I mean, yeah. I didn't start out as a business. I started out as a hobbyist. Um, we went, we made the the decision that we would try at least do our best, anyways, to always treat anybody we come into contact with the same way we would want to have been treated as a customer before. And I think in this hobby, there's a lot of people who who don't don't do that all the time and so we try we try and do our best well that's great uh, you should have a conversation with a company called aquarium engineering uh, I should... uh, actually, I'm familiar with them hold, hold on oh. for a second I smell something burning here that's not good <laughs> yeah I mean when you have this many printers there's always something you got to pay attention to I'm gonna go ahead I don't see anything going on so I'm just gonna burning is not good <laughs> yeah To make sure. So one of the things that we see a lot is that the uh, fans will fail and things like that, and you got to be you got to be here to catch that kind of stuff. Mm. Somebody's smoking. Uh oh. Yeah, you know it's funny because you know, these things run about 16, 17 hours a day, 
And so these and these fans are pretty much 24 hours because you know the, the, once they're done printing, they wait for you to come in. And uh, and fans fail. I mean, they they just do after a certain. Do you have them time. run uh, overnight at all, or you shut them down at night? They run for we run in, into the night. So like as we leave, we'll set up the last print job, and then okay. they'll go off, and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, you know come back in the morning with a batch of product. Like I said, I smell the smell of electricity somewhere, but. So if you guys see flames behind me, just kind of wave. You know? Oh, we'll let you know. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was I asking? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we, well, it looks like Howard left us, so uh, we're going to have to run the contest for the hint for one more. Um, yeah, I, you know, I joke around a lot on my streams, but, uh, yeah, customer service is, is key. And anybody that doesn't realize that as a business owner such as myself, that is number one priority. So it's good to hear people are are happy with your customer service because that's very important. Uh, everyone's thanking you for your time today. Thank you, Antonio, for your time today. Not reef automation related, but cool stuff nonetheless. I, I like well, seeing... I'm glad you had me on. I really enjoyed it. And... Uh... I think it was a lot of fun. Oh, and hopefully awesome. I was able to answer some questions for people that maybe I hadn't been able to answer before. So. Yeah. All right. The, the the winner of the third one is a guy named, I don't even know how to say his name. Antonio could pass as George Lucas. So apparently they <laughs> think you look like George Lucas. Well, everybody always thinks I look like somebody, but... Um... <laughs> George Lucas, really? <laughs> uh, so the winner of the third one is Gear... Heck, I don't know how to say his name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> is Gear he heck Heckestad here? We might only be giving two away, because uh, every time I get the third guy, they, they don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Desert Reef can assist with 3D printer fixing because his never works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can help with that too. So it's kind of interesting. I, get, I talk, I love talking 3D printing about as much as I like talking reefs, which is a lot. So, you know, give us a call. I'll be more than happy to give you a couple of pointers. Well, I guess gear has left as well. <laughs> Who the heck is this other person? Okay, let's uh, let's do it again, guys. Every week we got to do the contest 15 yeah, times. Go. I'm gonna keep checking. I keep the smell of this thing going on. So our 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 winner now is Anthony, and Anthony is a local guy. He's here in Arizona, so maybe he can go pick it up from you. Oh, nice. <laughs> I found I found our, our problem printer down there in the corner. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't think they can. Let me uh, zoom out. There we go. We had a, a failure on the heater cartridge. It actually kind of slipped out. Oh, so man. I mean, it's always it's, it's crazy. That printer's probably been printing nonstop for four months. So uh, that's awesome. I'm wondering if Desert Reefs Aquatics uh, printer has lasted more than a day. I don't think it works ever. I, don't, I just don't think it ever works. Uh, Anthony says he's been wanting to visit your print shop. Do you allow people to come and pick up product? Yeah, okay. they can stop in here and, and take a quick tour. I will say you do have to kind of schedule it. Because sometimes we're okay. not. Hot, so have them give us a call um, or shoot us an email or a message or whatever. We'll pick a time. You can come on by and check it out. Perfect. All right, folks. Well, Antonio, thank you so much again for your time this morning. Uh, I learned a lot because uh, I just bought your equipment on a, on a whim. <laughs> so I, I definitely learned a lot. Uh, I hope everybody else did. So, um, again, thank you so much for, for doing this. And thanks, everybody. Stay safe, especially if you're in Arizona. Don't go outside. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next Saturday. Thanks a lot, guys.